Hi there and welcome to the calculus of variations. This is snippet number five. In this snippet I'll look at integration by parts. Now first of all I'll derive the equation for integration by parts and it comes from the product rule for differentiation. So if you had um, two functions of say u times v and we're looking to find the derivative product rule says it's going to be u v derivative plus v u derivative. So if I integrate both ends we'll have u v derivative equals the integral of u v derivative plus the integral of v u derivative. Um, so that will be u times v because it's the integral of a differential so and this will be the integral of u v derivative plus the integral of v u derivative okay so then we could take this over here so we would have the integral of u v derivative would equal, take that across and you would have u times v minus the integral of v u derivative. Okay, so that really is the integration by parts. And an example uh, we could use simple example integral of x sine x by dx so we say let um, u equal x so du by dx would equal 1 ok u just put u derivative ok Right, u derivative equals that, and if you let sine x equals v derivative, then we could say, say v derivative equals sine x, so v would equal the integral of that, which is minus cos x. Okay, so then you could write first part of it would be u times v which would be x times minus cos x minus the integral of 1 times minus cos x by dx which would equal minus x cos x plus the integral of cos x dx which would equal minus x cos x and plus sin x and at the end we can just pop in our value of c okay now uh, what's the point of me showing you this? Well, the, the main point is that um, I, I learned uh, integration by parts like that as well from, from high school and beyond, but I never really thought much about it. It was just a process. Uh, but if we were seen from what we do in calculus of variations, say for example when we worked out the Euler-Lagrange equation, we had something that looked like this. Integral of partial f by partial y derivative times some function say eta derivative of x by dx from point a to point b and we know that this eta if that's some function there and we take that point as point a 
in that point there is point B, and I say that's X and Y. Then our eta of X, well, an eta of X would, would be some function, okay, that is defined as zero at this point A and defined as zero at that point B. And that's very important. This eta is always defined as zero and the derivative um, so okay so that's all to find the zero eta to find the zero at those points okay now if we want to make so we could rewrite that there as integral from a to b partial f partial y derivative of d eta by dx all by dx okay I've just written it in, in the Leibniz form then we could look at this and we could say well what if I wanted to make this the subject of the differential okay then we can do that by differentiation by parts and we can do it um, quite simply um, if we do it in the long hat, if we do it in the long form, then we would have something like along partial f upon partial y derivative, okay, times eta x, okay, that would be our, if we, that would be our u factor here, and that would be our, our dv, so it would be u times v. Okay, and that would be from A to B, and we would have the integral of eta x times d by dx of partial f upon partial y derivative all by dx. Now, the main thing to point out here is that this eta x is always defined uh, as uh, zero at the points a and b. So this bit here is always going to disappear and become zero because you would have that times zero at b and that times zero a. So that would just be zero and then you would have minus the integral of eta x d by dx of partial f upon partial y derivative by dx okay and just to show what it equals we're going to say um, partial f by partial y derivative d eta by dx equals that okay so that's us done our differentiation by parts okay when we know that this value of eta x equals zero at the end points now uh, when you work through a couple of variations we know that eta x equals zero at these endpoints. We just keep it in mind that that's always that's the case. So it means if I was to have this form here, I could quickly go to this form here in three simple steps. I would say I would go from here and say right, I want to rewrite that, and I want to rewrite it with partial f or partial y being the subject of the differential, and I want to take the eta out of the subject of the differential. Okay, so then you could quite simply do that and by first of all step number one negative make your term negative okay there's a negative so we end up with a negative okay and secondly we take it out of the differential so whatever's inside the differential comes outside the differential so we end up with this then is eta and then we put so that's factor number two okay 
we take it out number three we put partial f so whatever was outside the differential put it inside it so we end up with d by dx of partial f upon partial y derivative okay so we've done all these three so and finally end up with minus d by dx times minus d by dx of partial f upon partial y derivative times our value of n okay times our value sorry value of eta okay so that's the integration by parts and you can do that very quickly in your head and that crops up all the time and calculus of variations and lots of other um, maths and physics okay thank you for listening and goodbye